It's November 2015, and this month we're going to deviate from our normal course and answer a question that came up. We're going to talk about who Josephus was. I want to start off by giving some background. It's important to understand Josephus and his background to understand the Jewish-Roman War, which took place over the year 66 to 73 AD. One of the key dates in this occurs in 70 AD, which is when the Romans see Jerusalem and destroy the temple. So this is a date that we'll often talk about, and it's worth actually just uh, remembering. So 70 AD is when the Romans come, uh, take Jerusalem, and destroy the temple. Now, Josephus was born uh, earlier, uh, actually just a few years after Jesus dies. Um, so he's born into the, the world right around the time of Jesus. He is a priest. He grows up in a priestly family and becomes a Jewish priest. This is important, so when we think about his background, he has a deep knowledge of Jewish history, Jewish theology, the, the Old Testament. Now, during the, this war, the Jewish-Roman War, he fights against the Romans. He's a captain of a group of soldiers in Galilee. And in 67 AD, he's taken prisoner. After spending some time in prison, he actually is released and becomes a Roman citizen. He is liked, actually, by the emperor's family and is, is uh, part of their larger circle, actually. Because he has favor with the Romans, he's asked to be a negotiator in the conflict between the Romans and the Jews. Uh, after that fails, the Romans take uh, Jerusalem. He moves to Rome, and he re receives patronage from the emperor's family um, and begins a writing career. Two of his writings were, one, the War of the Jews, which is an account of the Roman-Jewish War, and two, the Antiquities of the Jews. This is the, the second book is one that I think you'll hear the most about. And what it is, is a history of the Jews for a non-Jewish audience. How do we use these writings? First, they provide history and background on Judaism in the first century AD. And this is important as we read the New Testament. Often we will read about Jesus' interactions with the Jews as part of his ministry. And sometimes we don't know who the characters are. Who are the Sadducees? Who are the Pharisees? And Josephus' writings provide us some of that context. In the case of the Antiquities of the Jews, I think this is the most common reason that we use Josephus' writings, is that he provides uh, the Old Testament. He read, Again, the Antiquities of the Jews is written for a non-Jewish audience, and it provides the content of the Old Testament. Not all the content, so it doesn't provide kind of prophecies and speeches, but it focuses on the actions, events, and history of the Old Testament. What is great, and the reason that we use it so often as Latter-day Saints, is it provides additional information. So it tells us when um, Abraham takes his son Isaac up to sacrifice him, that Isaac is not a little boy, but uh, a young man, um, and provides his age. And sometimes um, we don't know whether this additional information is because he has a better source, or as if, if he's giving his own opinion. Um, but having this additional information, um, and sometimes there's alternative versions too, this enriches our understanding of the Old Testament. It allows us to read these stories and potentially get more out of it than we would otherwise, which is often why when we see, read in the Old Testament student manual or other sources, it frequently cites um, from the content of the antiquities of the Jews to provide a richer understanding of the content in the Old Testament. 